<laughs> I, I try to I try to be brief, and we'll discuss the asymptomatic aortic stenosis. So here it's always the same slide, but I think it's good to repeat it uh, several times. Uh, we already addressed the problem of assessing the severity of aortic regurg. It, it is really uh, crucial. And here again, integ integration of data from um, echo. If echo is difficult, if you have trouble, MRI could be helpful, but we need more evidence to support that. Uh, we have to be sure that patient is asymptomatic. In the field of uh, severe AR, it's slightly less difficult than in the field of MR, but it could be the the problem. And then we have to look at the patient very carefully and to do this uh, risk-benefit uh, balance. Of course, we should speak with the patient and look at what we are able to do. And here it uh, pertains to the um, ability, the ability of performing a durable aortic valve repair. And I should say that in my country, it is not offered to all patients. So here is the, um, the diagram. So we first should look, when we see the patient, at the ascending aorta. If there is no enlargement of the ascending aorta, f uh, second step is to know if the aortic regurge is severe. If it is not the case, of course, we follow up the patient. If it is the case, uh, we, if the patient has no symptoms, we are going to look at the echo and to assess the left ventricular function. And if the left ventricular function is slightly impaired, we should go to surgery. If the left ventricular function is not impaired um, or not sufficiently impaired, we follow up this, uh, the patient. And yesterday we had this discussion with Dr. Chambers. Of course, it, this is the case when you see the patient for the first time. If you see the patient for the first time, if he is somewhat borderline, you should ask him to come back within six months. It's not a disease which will worsen within a couple of days, so invite him to come back within six months. If he is not at the threshold, but if you know him, and if there is a real increase in the size of the left ventricle, or a real decrease in ejection fraction, you may well consider that the progression is sufficient and you are willing to go to surgery. So, once again, guidelines are not Bible, and we have to keep our clinical judgment. So, here are the recommendations in the tables. Here, there, are, there is no randomized trial, but there are a lot of uh, very large studies, mostly coming from the US. So in patients who are asymptomatic, but who have an ejection fraction below 50%, it's an indication for surgery, and surgery should be considered in the asymptomatic patient with ejection fraction which is preserved, but uh, we have a dilatation of the left ventricle with a threshold which are uh, cited here, and these studies are coming once again mostly from the Mayo Clinic. We also put a threshold with an adaptation to the body surface area, but this works in the case of a little woman, small women. If you have an obese patient, indexing for the body surface area is probably less accurate, but in very small women, for example, or in, in a young adolescent, very small one, it could be really helpful because if you do not adjust uh, to the body surface area in this patient, you are uh, well uh, doing a mistake and you are losing the opportunity of correcting the aortic regurg before irreversible left ventricular dysfunction. So now the real piece of cake is a patient with ascending aorta, dilatation of the ascending aorta. And here the problem is not the degree of AR, the problem is the ascending aorta. And if there, there is a significant enlargement of the ascending aorta, that is a strong incentive to go to surgery. So uh, we did change slightly the thresholds for proposing intervention. In the previous guideline, we are proposing to intervene if uh, the maximal diameter of the aorta was 45 mm for Marfan and was 50 for all patients with bicuspid. And here we are a little bit more prudent. Why is it so? Because we got a couple of data on natural history of patients with aortic aneurysm. 
This is, these are data coming from my institution. It's a marathon population. The marathon population is a population which is the best studied. It's a group of almost 2,000 patients, relatively long follow-up, and you can see that there could be events. The incidence is 0.2%. But what you see also in this longitudinal study it is that the rate of complication is extremely low in patients with an aortic diameter below 50 millimeters. And another way to present this data is to show what will happen, and here you see it's almost zero problem, and the problem will start above 50 millimeter in diameter. Also, a point which is important, which was shown by the same group, is the importance of genetic analysis, genetic analysis, genetic counseling, and patients who have a mutation of fibrinogen 1 have a very bad prognosis in terms of arctic dilatation, in terms of arctic event, and also in terms of mitral disease. Patient with bicuspid. Now, patient with bicuspid, we have now a couple of studies suggesting that these patients are going to develop aortic aneurysm, but aortic dissection is extremely rare. And the total incidence in this Mayo study with 25 years follow-up is 1.5 per 10,000 patient year. So it's higher than the general population, but it is low. And it's always good to have a second study confirming the first one, and the second study, a large number of patients, a long follow-up, did confirm the same thing. Mortality was not different from the general population, but these patients do need surgery, not for the ascending aorta, but for the valvular disease, and the incidence of aortic dissection is really very low. And they showed here what will be the predictor of the need for surgery or events. It is the age, of course, and it is the disease of the aortic valve. So, in patients with um, bicuspid valve, we are pretty reassured about the risk of dissection, so we should not operate them systematically on the ascending aorta before some thresholds, and, but there is a risk on the aortic valve per se. What are the surgical options? You know, we don't have many, many things new. Of course, you can propose the good old aortic valve replacement with a good old complication we know, and it's somewhat of a concern for a young patient to have such an incidence of morbidity related to the prosthesis after 10 years. You see, grossly 40% of the patient had had at least one complication. So it's not a benign problem. So uh, if you add on replacement of the ascending aorta, the classical dental operation, results are good, but it is low if you deal with patient on a scheduled basis. But if you wait until the dissection, of course, the operative mortality will be extremely high. And there, there is a risk of complication over time with this intervention. Of course, valve repair is fantastic if you have a good experience, if you are a skillful surgeon with a large, a very good echo person. Uh, yesterday you had the opportunity to listen to several presentations from the group of Jebriel Curry and Jean-Luc Vanchel, and you see how much the team works, and I think that's very important. If we want to develop this technique, we need a real teamwork between echocardiographists, surgeons working together before and during the surgery, and also working together to assess the result and propose us some table in order to guide us for the future exactly reproducing what happened in the domain of mitral valve repair. Here is a paper from our friend Dr. Schaffers, which shows fantastic outcome uh, in all patients after aortic valve repair in his hand with better result if you have a tricuspid valve. And now, uh, how did we end up in this group, which was made, don't forget it, of cardiologists, ignorant we are, of course, but of cardiac surgeons. And among the cardiac surgeons, they were pretty conservative surgeons in terms. They were not performing valve repair, but we had also Dr. Schaffers. 
and we ended up with this recommendation. So as regards surgery on the aortic root, whatever the severity of the aortic regurg. So surgery is indicated in patients who have aortic root disease with maximal ascending aortic diameter over 50 for patients with Marfan without risk factors. The threshold is 45 if you have risk factors and 50 for bicuspid with risk factors. For all the others, the threshold is 55. So if you want to see uh, with more detail, the first remark is all these uh, numbers are non-magic numbers. Once again, we should apply a good clinical judgment. For example, if you are discussing some something on the ascending aorta, but you are doing something on the aortic valve per se, you are going to work on the ascending aorta at lower threshold, and probably the threshold could be somewhere around 45 millimeters. This also depends on the structure and on your operative findings. What are the risk factors which may lead to intervene at lower threshold of aortic dilatation for the Marfan? positive history of dissection, of course, of sudden death, severe aortic regurg, that's obvious, severe disease of the mitral valve, difficult situation, desired pregnancy, and here the threshold could be 45, maybe slightly lower, and progression. And here the progression were quite strict by defining the progression, is defined by an increase over 2 mm per year, that is to say 3 mm, but it's not one echo done by Dr. X compared with one MRI done by Dr. Y. It should be on repeated measurements using the same imaging technique measured at the same level with side-by-side -side comparison and confirmation by another technique. This is good clinical sense because you are not sending to surgery or surgery, which is not zero risk, only on one number. You have to consolidate your statement by multiplying the evaluation and comparing very strictly. Surgery is good, but it's not a zero risk. And in patients with bicuspid, we also looked at the same size progression, but we took into account systemic hypertension and a history of coactation. So there are two or three other aspects we can operate on. Lower threshold of aortic diameter in low risk patient if valve repair is likely to be performed and performed in an experience center. Exactly the same statement as for mitral regurg. If we are going to expect a durable aortic valve repair, and once again, we, we should repeat, it's not the case in all centers. Uh, during a Congress, of course, we hear a lot of excellent presentation, but at least uh, as far as I'm concerned, when we go back home, uh, the, truth, the reality may be different. So in patients with moderate AR who undergo bypass surgery or mitral valve surgery, of course, the decision to treat the aortic valve will uh, take into account the degree of the ER its etiology and the LV function and the possibility of repair. Finally, according to uh, what we know from the Marfan syndrome, if you don't operate on them, you have to follow them very carefully, and if you follow them, you should give them very strict advices about what they can do and what they should not do, especially competitions, they are not really competitors, and uh, strenuous uh, physical exercise, they are not doing that very often, but they may well um, do sometimes isometric exercise, which is not good for them, and finally, you saw uh, what was shown about fibrillin 1, it's very important to look at genetics and to have some sort of counseling. It is absolutely mandatory in patients with Marfan and it is uh, to be considered in patients with bicuspid valve. So just to summarize these few points, in addition to the introductory talk, the evaluation of AR in asymptomatic patients relies mainly on the clinical assessment and degree of AR, and also if you are in doubt, uh, perform exercise testing, but not exercise echo, it doesn't help. And comprehensive non-invasive examination, evaluating both 
the Arctic valve. Don't forget and ask your echo person to look very carefully at the ascending aorta, different levels, look very carefully at the mechanism of AR, at the texture of the leaflets and the left ventricle. Surgery is indicated, no doubt, in the asymptomatic patient with severe AR and beginning of impairment of LV function. And if there is deterioration over time, it's an important point. And finally, surgery on the ascending aorta is indicated, whatever the degree of AR, in case of enlargement, according to threshold, which should be related to the etiology. So thanks for attention.